Hi, Jim Graham from Realtruth.net. Tonight's lesson is Redemption, lesson three in this short series. Back to basics is really what we're doing. We learned in lesson one where we came from. Lesson two, we learned how we disobeyed and got thrown out of the garden. And in this lesson, we will discuss the redemption plan, the redemption process in Back to Basics. And it doesn't take a theologian to understand this. And that's why we are, that's why I am going through this uh, once again. <clears throat> Uh, as a recap, Genesis 3, uh, they were uh, in the garden after the fall. Yahweh was walking in the cool of the garden. He asked them where they were because they hid themselves. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself is what the man said. And... So he asked uh, this is what he said who told you you were naked have you eaten of the tree where I commanded that you should not eat and the man said and this is what we do today the man said the woman you gave to me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. He blamed it on her. And then he turned to the woman and he said, What did you do? And the woman said the same thing. Well, the certain beguiled me. I did eat. It was someone else's fault. But then he cursed the Satan and, and the serpent that was um, embodied by him. Made him eat of the dust of the ground, but he said he put enmity between him and the woman. And his seed and her seed. And it would bruise his head and that he would bruise her seed's heel. Now this is the first prophecy of the Messiah to come. The first hint that hey, there might be something that could uh, take place. And then in 320, uh, because the clothes that the man and woman made for themselves, they could not cover themselves by their own works. And so Yahweh killed an animal and gave them coats of skin and he clothed them. And that was um, the first foreshadowing of the shedding of blood. These and showed them that, hey, you transgressed, but you can't fix it. And men today are still trying to fix it themselves, and they can't fix it themselves. And uh, they try and fix it with their traditions and church doctrine or just their belief. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we go on. So, <clears throat> death reigned by one man from the onset of the transgression and the fall from Yahweh's favor. We were condemned to death by one man's transgression and for this one man's disobedience. All mankind now had the knowledge of good and evil and the free will to choose to do good or to do evil. You can do good or evil. You have that choice. Now, without this redemption plan, mankind had no hope. There would be no resurrection of life anyway. 
and nothing wants this life of dust cease to exist. Um, we were not made an immortal being or soul. We would live out our vain lives and return to dust, all in vanity from dust to dust, and be resurrected. If if there would even have been <clears throat> a resurrection, it would have been to destruction with no hope. But redemption came through one man. One man redemption came through. And Yahweh had a plan to cover our shame and redeem us back to himself. And that plan was through Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lamb of God, the Son of Man. And these coats of skin signified the shedding of blood and death that was to come for our redemption and to cover our shame. Yahweh, the Elohim, did not come to this earth and die for us. It was not man, uh, a Elohim incarnated. It is not a trinity. It is not a modalist God that we have. The Elohim we have is the Elohim. Yeshua. Now we call him his son. And we know that we'll get into that in another video. But he said, uh, has he ever called any of his angels? His only begotten, has he said that to them? No. And um, so he sent his son that through him <coughs> there is only one uh, one way back to Yahweh, to the one true creator. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, then how much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. This, this word reign in life means to uh, have life. It's going to be by one. Whereas by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, which is to death. Even so, by righteousness of one, the free gift came unto all men unto what? Justification of life. We are justified to have life everlasting to get back to the tree of life for as by one man's disobedient many were made sinners or transgressors and why 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 is that said that way because we were given the knowledge of good and evil and for whatever reason we always choose the evil that's what man did and so by the obedience of one, by the obedience of Yeshua. If Yeshua was the Almighty, the Yahweh, the Elohim, and if you want to put it in your terms, the G-O-D, then why did he have to be obedient? What was he obedient to? But by the obedience of one, the Son of Man, Yeshua Messiah, shall many be made righteous. You notice it doesn't say all. It says many will be made righteous. So there's a requirement of man to do something to be made righteous. <clears throat> um, okay. They have it available. We have to act upon it. It's free, but we have to act upon it. In Romans 4, Starting at 17, as it is written, 
I have made thee a father of many nations. He's talking about Abraham here. You can go back and read the other verses before it. Before him whom he believed, even Yahweh, who brings to life the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed, right here, seed, be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of Yahweh through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to Yahweh. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Therefore it was impudiated to him for righteousness. Okay, what was impudiated to him for righteousness? We'll see this, we'll talk about this just a little bit. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Yeshua, our master, from the dead. Who has delivered us from our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Abraham's faith was imputed unto him for righteousness. His <clears throat> faith, what is faith? His belief. He believed Yahweh. He believed the Creator. Now, if he was, oh, I believe, I believe he could do that if he did not continue in the work and do the work <clears throat> of that belief, would it have ever been counted unto him for righteousness? Absolutely not, because if he didn't do the work, everything that <clears throat> Yahweh had told him would have never come to pass. He had to believe it. He had to do it. He had to perform it. He had to do what he was commanded to do. That was what he had to do. That is why his faith was counted to him for righteousness. And this goes right back to the basics, right back to the beginning, and is the premise of all scripture. Believe Yahweh. Believe the Creator. Believe Him. That when He says something, He means it. He's not playing around and it's not joking. <clears throat> he does not joke. He has a very good sense of sarcasm and, and in some ways a little sense of humor, but he does not joke. And you think you're going to get by with your church doctrine for salvation or your, or your uh, doctrines of men, your one verse scriptures, you think you're going to get saved by. It ain't working, folks. <clears throat> but the redemption plan is very simple and easy to understand when we understand who we are and where we came from. It's very, very simple. We came from the ground. We're dust. We're created beings. We fell. And now we're going to die. Everybody's going to dust. This body cannot inherit. Eternity cannot inherit <clears throat> eternal life. It's got to go away. 
because it is corrupted, it has fallen, and even though we have redemption, the redemption isn't for this body. All right, this body will not, well, cease to exist no matter what that is, is uh, upon us. For created from the dust of the ground, set up in the world to obey the Creator and care for His garden. We became spotted, dirty, and unclean the day we disobeyed Yahweh. Praise Yahweh and lift up His, his name upon high, for Yahweh has set before mankind a way of escape a way to be redeemed back to Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth, for all that is in them. For Yahweh showed unmerited favor toward this created man. And let me, let me put this here. Yahweh showed unmerited favor toward this created man. He could have just said, poop, blam, it's fire, it's done, it's over, I'm not dealing with this anymore, but he didn't. He made a way of escape for us, and he gave us, uh, he still gave us the right to the tree of life. If, 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 if we will do certain things. Now let's talk a little bit about this grace in this redemption because uh, the modern man, the, uh, the corrupt churches, the Protestantism out there has totally perverted this. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it is by grace that we have been given this, um, or this unmerited favor that we've been given this opportunity. And that redemption is so, so simple. And all we have to do, here's what we have to do. We have to resolve in our hearts that we are going to believe Yahweh and repent. And turn back from our disobedience from our transgressing his words, his commands, and resolve that we are going to obey him. And then we can turn to his sacrificed lamb, to Yeshua. And then in Yeshua, we can be washed clean of our transgressions and our disobedience and be made a new, sinless, unspotted creature once again, just like in the garden before the transgression. That is what this redemption is about. We are made new. We are washed. We're made clean. It's really, we're made clean. Uh, we're declared, okay, I forgive you. You are now righteous. You are back in right standing with me. This, re 